The New York Giants are most likely going to draft a quarterback in the 2025 NFL draft. And the Giants, mainly John Mara, he cannot make this mistake. And it has nothing with the QB that he is going to draft. My question to you before we dive into this, do you trust Joe Shane and Brian Dable to make the Giants great again? I'm not talking about next year, I'm talking over the next 10 years. Are those two guys the right guys? Type Y for yes, type N for no, and let's dive into it. You're watching Giants Now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green. I appreciate every single person for making us your go-to place on YouTube for today's show. The question that John Mara must answer is not if Brian Dable is the right coach to help the Giants get to the playoffs. It is not if Joe Shane can build a roster that can get the Giants to the playoffs. The question that John Mara has to answer is this. Are Joe Shane and Brian Dable the guys that, A, you trust to draft the right quarterback, and B, the guys to develop the right quarterback? And most importantly, are they the long-term answers? Because this is what I'm trying to say. I don't want the quarterback that the Giants are going to draft in April to be on his second head coach, his second general manager, and his second offensive coordinator in his rookie season. I don't want the Giants to draft a quarterback, and then after the 2025 season, you fire Brian Dable, and you fire Joe Shane, and then you are on to already the second pe people in power developing this quarterback. Giants are going to draft a quarterback this year. There's no way they can. I know everyone's saying, wait for Arch Manning this, wait for Arch Manning that. It's not going to happen. The Giants are going to draft a quarterback this year. And we need to figure out, is Joe Shane the right guy to draft a quarterback? I already have my doubts. He gave a four-year, $160 million contract to Daniel Jones. Whether he was pressured by John Mara or not, he was the general manager that signed off on it last. Another question, is Brian Dable the right guy to develop the quarterback position? Because overall, this is what it comes down to. If you are one bad season away in 2025 from firing Brian Dable, if you are one bad season in 2025 away from firing Joe Shane, they should not be allowed to draft the quarterback because that quarterback needs to be raised by a village and the same village. I want my rookie quarterback going into his second season, going into the second season with the same general manager and the same head coach in the same offensive coordinator. There's a lot of talk that this QB draft class is not all that good. And look, there's still a long way left in the NCAA season to find out if they are. But if I had to say who are my top five guys that I'm looking at in this draft class, it's these guys. Carson Beck, Cam Ward, Quinn Ewers, Jalen Milrow, and Jackson Dart. That'll change. This will continue to evolve. But right now, those are the five guys I'm looking at. And the really the only point of today's show is this. It's a head coach, general manager, and quarterback league. You are only as good as your head coach, your GM, and your quarterback. And you know why the Giants were never any good with Daniel Jones? Is because they never had the right head coach. They never had the right GM. But most importantly, he's just not a good quarterback. Remember what John Mara said? We have done everything to screw this kid up. We have done everything to screw Daniel Jones, then don't do it again. Make the decision once this season is over. Do you believe he'll draft the right guy? And do you believe he will be the coach to get the most out of that guy? I need my head coach, GM, and quarterback tied at the hip. I need them locked in, moving together. The Giants cannot screw this up. You cannot roll in to the 2025 NFL season with Joe Shane and Brian Dable on the hot seat. Because if you just roll through another season, let's say in 2025 the Giants draft their rookie quarterback and they win four games, they're 4-13, four and 13, and you're going to fire them, what is the point of letting them draft your quarterback? John Mara, you need to make sure 
you have the right GM and the right head coach. Because having that right GM and that right head coach is just as important, if not more, than drafting the right quarterback. It's already hard enough to play quarterback in this league. How many quarterbacks in the last 10 years that are first-round picks have we seen bust? There are plenty of them. Young quarterbacks, they need a lot of support. They need talent around them. They need five guys that can block in front. But most importantly, they need a head coach they believe in. They need a head coach that believes in them. And they need an offensive coordinator and a head coach and a general manager to make their job easy as possible. So if you are one season away, if you are a bad 2025 20, away from firing Dable and Joe Shane, just fire them now. Fire them at the end of the season. Get new leadership in. Get new people in charge making decisions. Guys that you want here for the next 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15 years. Because you need your head coach, GM, and quarterback attached at the hip. I actually like somewhat of the Giants supporting roster when it comes to the support system that is going to surround a rookie quarterback. I don't love it. I wish they had more talent at the running back spot. I wish they were deeper at wide receiver. I wish they had an uber-talented tight end that they could lean on. But overall, you have an elite left tackle. Andrew Thomas is a top five left tackle in football. You got an improved O-line. Jermaine Illuminor is more than serviceable at right tackle. John Michael Schmitz looks to be getting better. Greg Van Roten showed you that he can compete still. Maybe you get a new right guard after this year. We've also seen that John Runyon can show that he could play and be better. You got a wide receiver one in Malik Neighbors. And you got a talented defense with Dexter Lawrence, Brian Burns, Bobby Okereke, Deontay Banks, and the rest of the boys over there. Elite left tackle. Improved O-line and a wide receiver one with a talented defense. Think about it like this. When you think of all the rookie quarterbacks in the last 10 years that have failed, why have they failed? It's because they don't have the support of their franchise. It's because they don't have anybody they can lean on. Quarterbacks that were drafted, that then entered their second season with a new head coach, a new offensive coordinator, or a new GM, are almost always going to fail. Look at Baker Mayfield, drafted by the Browns. His head coach was Hugh Jackson. They fired him midway through the season. They made Greg Williams the interim head coach. Then they fired him, and then they fire, hired Freddie Kitchens. So Baker Mayfield, before he even played a snap in his sophomore season, had already gone through three head coaches. How is he supposed to be successful? Sam Darnold, when he got drafted, his head coach was Todd Bowles. When he took over in year two, or when he came back in year two, the new head coach was Adam Gase. It's not going to work. Bryce Young, he went from Frank Reich to Dave Canales in two years. That's why he's benched. Also other reasons. Mitch Trubisky, when he was drafted, his head coach was John Fox. In his second season, his head coach was Matt Nagy. Had to learn another system in year two. What about Justin Fields? He went from Matt Nagy to Matt Eberflus. He may be no good, but you're also asking your quarterback to work uphill when he's got to learn system number two. He's got to be on head coach number two. He's got to be on head coach number two and GM number two. Derek Carr, Blake Bortles, Marcus Mariota, Sam Bradford, Brandon Whedon, Blaine Gabbert, Nick Foles, and Colt McCoy. All of those quarterbacks were on their second head coach, offensive coordinator, or general manager in year two. None of them were all that good with the team that drafted them. It takes a special individual to overcome dysfunction. It takes an elite, talented quarterback to overcome dysfunction. Trevor Lawrence, he was good enough to overcome it with the dysfunction that he had to have with Urban Meyer and then going to Doug Peterson. Questions still out on him. I believe in Trevor Lawrence, but it's not just written in ink that he's great. I think there's questions still out about Jalen Hurts, but he was good enough to overcome being drafted with Doug Peterson as the head coach and then being transferred to Nick Sirianni. And then Justin Herbert. How many head coaches has he already gone through? But he's good enough to overcome that. If you don't take anything else from today's video, just take this. John Mara has to make sure that he has the right general manager and the right head coach in place before drafting a quarterback. I don't want my rookie quarterback to enter his second season with his second head coach, his second general manager, and his second offensive coordinator. John Mara, if you are going to enter the 2025 season with Brian Dable and Joe Shane on the hot seat, just fire him when the 2024 season ends up. Just do it then. Get guys you trust in the building before drafting a quarterback. 
because I need those three guys, my general manager, head coach, and quarterback attached at the hip. I don't want another Daniel Jones situation where it's new head coach, new OC, new head coach, new OC. Give him some support. I want the same general manager, same head coach, and same quarterback for a long, long time. So if they're on the hot seat, fire them and get new people in that you trust to develop and select the right guy. One more time. Do you trust Joe Shane and Brian Dable to make the Giants great again? Why for yes and for no. And make sure you are following me on social media. I'm on Twitter, at MarshallGreen underscore. I'm on Instagram, at MarshallGreen underscore. Hit me up over there, and let's go Big Blue.